Hi folks, welcome to this fourth video in a crash course in counting. So far we've dealt with fundamental counting principle, factorial notation, and permutations. So recall that permutations were arrangements of objects. There are some sort of setup of objects where the order matters. So let's think about two little questions here. From a group of four people, how many arrangements of three people can you make? So let's say these people have first names that start with A, B, C, and D. So you could have A, B, C. You could have A, B, D. You could have A, C, B. And I could write them all out. Phew, that's a lot of possibilities. You know, it would have been a lot faster just to go 4P3, eh? and then we would have had four factorial over one factorial. We know that there were 24 possibilities, but writing them out is actually gonna help me with the second part of the question that I'm wondering about. From a group of four people, how many teams of three people could be made? So in other words, if the order didn't matter, how many ways can you arrange these people? Well, you could have person A and person B and person C. You could have person A and person B and person D. You'd have person A and C and person Oh no, hold on, that's the same as the first one. So that's really a repetition in terms of teams. So we could have A, B, C, A, B, D. We could have A, C, D. And we could have B, C, D. There are really only four different teams that we could have. If four, because order doesn't matter. Okay. So if order doesn't matter, it's not a permutation. That is what a true mathematical combination is. It's a selection of objects where the order does not matter. So if you're talking about a lineup or an arrangement, you're probably looking at a permutation. How many ways can they be set up? If you're looking at just a selection or a group or a team, then that's a combination. You don't care about order. That brings us back to the notes. And of course, the PDF of the notes, both filled in and blank, is in the video description below, and it does contain some practice questions. So a combination is a selection of objects where the order does not matter. So remember, your combination lock at your locker, that's not really a combination lock. The order matters, it's a permutation lock. Hands of cards are great examples of combinations, and they're really classic North American examples. The hand queen, king, ace is no different from holding the hand ace, queen, king. They're still the same members. Combinations can come in handy when trying to determine the number of ways to form a team. Again, as long as order doesn't matter, then the team Eden, Lindsay, Krista is identical to the team Lindsay, Eden, Krista. It doesn't matter. So Andy, Beth, Chris, and Diane are planning to play a game that only requires three players. How many different teams are possible? We actually just did this. You could have Andy, Beth, and Chris. You could have Andy, Beth, and Diane. Uh, we could have Andy, Chris, and Diane. We could have Beth, Chris, and Diane. There are four possibilities. Okay. Your calculator can figure out the number of possible combinations using this NCR button, which is probably very close to your NPR. The actual formula for NCR comes from permutations with identical objects, which we've kind of glossed over, but it would be this. Now to be able to use it in your calculator, you can probably gloss over this formula entirely. So how many ways can you select six different flavors of pop or soda from a possible 11 flavors? So let's think, we have 11 possible flavors, 11 total, and we're gonna take six at a time. That means we've got 11 C6. Right here, you've got the instructions on a TI-30X2S, which is a very common ca calculator, but you can use it on any kind of calculator. Sometimes people will write this and they'll think 11C6 means 11, and I'm going to choose six of them. Okay. So I can head to my calculator and work this out. I won't bother with this formula over here. I'll just use the shortcut. I'm going under math. It'll be PRB. And right under NPR, I can see NCR. I have to type 11C6. You may have to type the 11 before uh, you put in the C. For me, it's afterwards. 462. 
Now, why is it a combination? It doesn't matter the order that you put them in your cart. You're still going home with the same six different flavors of pop. If order did matter, then that number would be way, way bigger. Let's just figure that out. If I do 11P6, let's try this, 11 P6. It's an enormous number in comparison, 332,640 compared to 462. Adding in the variable of order makes a big difference. Sometimes the decision of whether order matters or not is kind of a personal interpretation. And for these questions, let's assume that order doesn't matter. Um, and especially in number three, something like this, how many different 10 question exams can be formed from a test bank using 25 questions? Assume that order doesn't matter here, uh, but you could legitimately say, well, sometimes it, it does matter. Um, and then in the next video, we will talk about the case where uh, we have to distinguish whether order matters or not, whether we have a permutation or a combination. Number eight is interesting. It's about uh, gambling. Number nine is an interesting one. Number seven requires you to know a bit about card hands. So if you don't know a lot about cards, you can either check it out uh, or you could skip over that one. As always, there are answers at the end of this PDF. So I'll scroll slowly through the questions and then I'll go to the answers. And there are the answers for combination questions.